This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part four of my Jingle 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 workshop series. I'm finally getting to use this fa la 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 paper. I'm so excited. This is part of the Santa's workshop. And I just thought it went so well with this stamp set. And I've been saying it all along, I'm gonna use this paper. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some Tis the Season to Be Jolly cards using the Jingle Jingle Jingle. So in part one, we used Jolly. And then part two, we used Jingle. Part three, we used Believe. And now we're going back to Jolly. We'll kind of cycle around. I'm hoping this series is at least six parts. We'll see how much I can get done by the end of September, early. I mean, is it not even September? As October, early November. All right, so I have more cards to show you. I, I didn't just make these. These are just the ones with Santa's Workshop. I made a big pile using Jolly. I'll show you all these cards and everything we created in parts one through four as we get going. So let's do this. Let's just do some die cutting first. So we're going to use, for this, for this to start out this uh, die cutting, oh, and by the way, I do have the catalog here, so let me get rid of that. Holiday catalog, it's called the J July to December mini catalog, showing you where this is at, but just go to my website. You don't need to actually use the catalog. Just go to my website in the description of this video, right beneath the video. There's a description. And in my website, just type in Santa. Oh, I put Santa's Express in my comments, but it's actually Santa Express. And there's the paper we're using. See the coordinating colors? So now you'll know why I'm using Poppy Parade cardstock, uh, Granny Apple Green cardstock, Shaded Spruce cardstock. The reason I'm using those three is because they go with this paper. Also, other coordinating colors are Petal Pink mint macaron and evening evergreen but then i did some with the i did some cards with this celebrate everything paper which is a host only paper and throughout this series i've been using this jingle 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 then i can get rid of the catalog not get rid of just put it off to the side i want to make sure i oops sorry i keep hitting the camera there's the there's the stamp set we're using every month i do a workshop series on youtube so go back and check out some of these i mean Probably hundreds of my videos are just based on series that I do in consecutive order with just different projects and I really delve into different Stampin' Up! products. So I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so if you're in the U.S., please get this from me, the Jingle Jingle Jingle. And you will not regret it because I show you how to make so many things with the same stamp set that you'll, you almost don't need any other stamp sets. But of course, who? it's not really with crafting. It's not really a need, right? It's want... But we all want as many crafts as we can get. So for the, I'm opening up the die cutting machine and I'm sticking in. Uh, this is the base plate or the platform. That's number one. And then I'm going to put in thin die adapter, which is number two. That's the sandwich we need to cut our deckled rectangles. We'll put a plate number three in there. And then you need a plate number four for the top. See how I have a nice, neat one? Isn't that nice? I have a couple. That's That was brand new, just very... Very recently. Here, we'll use my two. I'll use my two newest ones, but they're still, the bottom one is always going to be more scratched, but don't worry about it. So we're going to then put our deckled rectangles on there, right? And then we're going to put our plate number three on top. So that's the sandwich. So let's go ahead and cut two of these at once. You're going to make, the, you're going to use the fa la 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 paper and your largest deckled rectangle. Well, actually, we'll do some with the largest and some with the second largest. So go ahead and put your, this is the Santa's Workshop paper. I'm using the fa la la la, -la piece. And then we're going to go like that with the largest deckled rectangle. And then we'll do some with this other size as well. Okay, so for this whole series, I've been explaining how I'm using different dies for different layering. And today I even have examples of where I showed you how to use the deckled rectangles with the stitched rectangle dies. So that's what I've been using throughout this. Deckled rectangles from the annual catalog, but again, they're on my website. And I've been using these stitched rectangles throughout this entire series. These are just fantastic to use with stamp sets that don't come with dies because you can just cut out your sentiments. Instant accents. Or you probably could have cut three pieces at once, but we're, we're that's kind of pushing it and it gets tight. So there's the fa la la la, -la paper. And now we're gonna take, okay, so let's, to get the next one, I always have to kind of put them, I have to nest them inside each other to make sure I'm not using, I'm going to take the big one away. I'm using the second largest one. 
And we're just going to put that on there and roll that through the fa la 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 paper. We can get a couple of these at once. Actually, here, let's do a different. Let's do some, uh, we'll do a ho, ho, ho. We'll put a ho, ho, ho under there. Because ho, ho, ho also goes really well with jolly, right? Tis the season to be jolly. And then you can have ho, ho, ho paper in the background. Both of those are perfect. So if you don't have to celebrate everything paper, you can get this paper. That one's a little tight fit. And I don't even know. Let's see who's on this. Kathy, I saw you were on there first. Kathy, do you know if our clearance sale is still going on? Um, I know it's still going on, but did we run out of all the DSP? Let us know in the comments. Kathy's a fellow demonstrator. She will know. We have, we have a clearance sale going on with, like, all these fantastic prices for designer series paper. Well, I bought it the first day, and then I, t I, I told everybody in my newsletter. So if you're not part of my newsletter, you can sign up at my Stampin' Up! Uh, store. And I told everybody, but then I didn't tell them again because usually that stuff always happens, and it like we run out after a short period of time because it's while supplies last. Now, this paper's not $6. This one is eleven fifty, I believe. Like, it's a regular price. This DSP. But I'm talking about ones that are retired. So we have some paper from last year that was Christmassy. Even some specialty paper that was $15. And then it retired, and then it went on sale. Like a while later. Okay, so it says Eden's Garden is still available. Well, wow, everything else sold out last night. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hear that? Eden's Garden is a pretty paper. That uh, uses the Evening Evergreen Soft Succulent color palette. If you like Eden's Garden and you're not sure what to do with it, I did an and it's specialty paper. It was only $6. I did an entire series on what to do with Eden's Garden. Paper and the cotton paper as well. I'm just doing another ho-ho-ho while I'm here. Actually, maybe we'll do. We'll do another big ho ho ho, and then we should do something. We need something for the smaller ones. We're gonna do something with the smaller rectangle in a moment, and this one too. We'll do. How about we do these with the smaller ones just for layers? Okay. How about that? Let's see if we can do. I mean, not not this one. This one's our actual jolly jolly jolly, the very small one. But I'm talking about this one here. We'll do a couple. We can fit two of these. Yes, that's what we're going to do next. I'll just fold that in half. Actually, we can do it. We probably could do it right now on the same little platform. So let's just go ahead and run this through. See what I'm doing? I'm do That one's the one layer because that's all I have for the ho-ho-ho. And I'm doing two layers of that one. And then we're done with our deckled rectangles and we have enough to do our project. Okay. And we just need some cardstock and such. Okay, so we're putting that through. And I can always use that. I always have some of this we can use for layers as well. Okay, I think I have enough good stuff here. I have this, this. We have, okay, that must not have all the way, went all the way through. Show you how to troubleshoot. And at the same time, I can show you how to cut. We'll just cut another piece of one at once. I'm just putting all my crafty goodness in a pile, and I have some from before. Our crafty goodness is just all the pieces we need here. So let's put that piece down, and let's put that piece down. So what you do to fix it, you just I just put another piece underneath it so I can go ahead and cut a second one. You just get it back on there, and it kind of snaps in like a puzzle. But then sometimes you need a little piece of tape. if you're going to try to run the die back through again. Now, that's one way to fix it, is to get it exactly on there. Another way to fix it is just to, like, use a smaller die and run it back through on a smaller die. Now, is it because I did it upside down? Was that the reason I can't get it to match up? Yeah, I think that's the reason I couldn't get it to match up, is I was, it was upside down. The decals go a certain way. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's better. Okay, now I'm putting it back on there. Running it through. Lost my top cutting plate. Here's my top cutting plate. Okay, so next, if you're following along with me, then you need some basic white cardstock. And you want the regular one, not the really thick one. 
That's going to be for your sentiments. I recommend you cut the pieces first and then die cut them instead of die cutting them first. Okay, good. Now we have that piece. We have lots of stuff to use for this project. We have this as a backup in case we need another layer later. You want to get your smallest decorative rectangle. Basic white cardstock. So just so just to re, just to recap, we used the largest just now. We used like the two largest for the top layers. And then I'm using I don't want to say the smallest one, but the one that's there might be one small, but I think it's the smallest one. We're using the one, the one that will fit the Tista Season to be jolly. Basically, to figure out which die I'm using, I just go over to around, you know, to my stamps and I say, oh, that'll work, but except the stamps aren't the right size there. It's the stamps in here. And I go, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that'll work. And then first I cut out the pieces and then I do the stamping. So I'm showing you my exact procedure. And I get a lot, a lot of cards done this way. So if you're kind of always flailing in the wind, like I used to do when I used to just create one card or two cards at a time when I first got started, if you're just flailing around, not making a lot of progress with your card making, you want to make a lot of cards faster, then do everything in stages. Don't make one card at a time. Just get... And if you're like, well, I only need to send one card. Oh, who only needs to send one card? You always have another person to send a card to. And if not, I have loads of troops you can help. Um... One of my team members is a pastor. She, she preaches at nursing homes, and I can we could get you. I wouldn't give you my team members' addresses directly, but I can get you in touch with. I wouldn't mind giving you my address, and then you could send things to me, and then you could we could send things to nursing homes. I have another lady that does quilts for vets. She needs cards, and then my neighbors, my neighbors do the food pantry every weekend. And wouldn't it be nice, you know, they give someone a card with the food pantry. They could say, give you an encouraging card for the day. Uh, you don't even have to sign your cards. I mean, even just to give someone a, a, a blank card, right? And then they put, like, um, some blessings in it, like a, a scripture or something. Someone could tape it there. The person could then use the card again or pass it on to someone else. So don't think, like, oh, I only need one card. Make extra cards because, like, build it, they'll come. You make a bunch of extra cards, you will have someone to give them to. Like, I, I just had yesterday, uh, just yesterday I was talking to one of my friends, and she was like, I didn't know that she did a Thanksgiving meal for some troops overseas. And I was like, oh. And she said, yeah, we give them, like, little goodie bags too. So now I'm going to give her some Thanksgiving cards to put in with the troops, like our little things, little of my little treat things that I do. And you you may know from my... I'm just cutting some more of these, by the way. you got to have a bunch of these for what we're doing, these little rectangles for stamping. And I said, oh, okay, so give you little things. And I did this course, you know, on scan and cut fall projects, and I made, like, a ton of a ton of things. And, you know, and as I'm experimenting, I'm always making extra things. So they're going to get my – they're, they're going to get my couple turkeys – for some centerpieces and some of my little blessings cards and my Thanksgiving cards. But the other ones that said you're a blessing that I made my own tag treats, I've already given all those away. Every one of those is gone already. And it's not even Thanksgiving time. And, I, and then my friend had to come over the other day and help me make 48 more Halloween party favors because I'd already given all those away. And it's, it, they were supposed to be for a Halloween party, and I gave them all away. And so I just give things away to, like, waitresses and dry, Uber driver, all kinds of things. I just want to erase that one there. So there's a little smudge on it. Then I'm going to get into stamping. So go ahead and get your stamping stuff out. We need getting out a bunch of different inks. We need a little silicone mat also to put underneath these. We're doing some stamping and we're doing a little bit of uh, coloring with the blends and markers. So I have this thing called a magic e magic rub eraser and it gets off. And the smudges are from the, uh, by the way, the little, like the, the cutting plates. You end up with like some smudges on your paper sometimes. All right, just throwing the eraser things on the floor. All right, so here we go. Now we got to put these down and this down and... Let's do, I think it was easier to do the lights first, in my opinion, because I need because the lights have to go on the top, and if you mess up the lights, 
The other stuff doesn't really mess up. Mess up the lights, it's like... See, the lights have to go like that, and then like that. And the last light's always going to get sort of cut off at the right angle like that. See? And so I was doing the lights first. That was the part I messed up. And then, not I didn't mess up much, but then we need a jolly. And then we need a tis the season. Wait, we need the tis the season to be jolly. These are photopolymer stamps. So I like that you could see through them. So those are the three that we need for this project today. Jolly has a little bit of staining on it because it's whenever you use pop, we're using poppy parade or kind of gives it that color. All right, I need some stamping blocks. We'll put the, we're going to push this one uh, flat side up, tis the season 2B. Okay, stamping block H. Leave that over there. We'll get one of these. We'll go jolly, stick jolly on there at an angle. Okay, flat side up. And now we need something for our little bells. Let's see if we can't put these on this little one. Nope. We need something bigger. We use this one, although it has a little, little uh, gifty. It was a gifty, so it's personalized. All right, stamping lights. Actually, here, just for... Because for teaching purposes, I can use things that you can't see through. But for you, I think you're going to want to see see through this. Now, these these are photopolymer stamps. So if you want to do stuff with your lights, like bend them a little bit, you can. Right? And then you could stamp, like bend them the way you want them. But I, I like them straight. And I'm going to, because I'm going to do this. Right? So let me just gonna show you what I mean. I'm going to make the angle myself like that. So I just want one little bulb hanging off the end like that. It kind of works. It worked when I tried it. Okay, so tap, tap, tap. I'm using Memento Black ink. Boy, it's really juicy. Let me rub it around. Get rid of some. All right, good enough. Tap, 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 and then we're going to just go like that. Okay. So perfect. And then tap it and get the other ones to kind of hang off as well. Just get one light to hang off the edge. See? And now we have a little string of Christmas lights along the top. Hardest part is done of your whole card. I mean, not the hardest part. It's just, I'm saying, it just that that's the only part. I always have, like, what I call a pain point, and, I'm, and then I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm demonstrating it. And, of course, it works perfectly. The power of positive thinking. So I was like, it's going to work perfectly, I said right before the video. And it did. It's working perfectly. There's a little bit of an extra bulb. Like, that happened to me a few times on the others. I don't care if a little piece of the bulb's there. As long as I don't smear the card. All right. I'm just doing two more. I'm not going to color them all for you, but... Or whatever is under there. Maybe three more. Only because I can. I mean, I... I mean, it doesn't take that much more time, right? To just do them all. Okay, put that over there. And the reason I'd like to also do this first is because these, these need a little chance to dry where the other part doesn't need a chance to dry. The jolly, I mean, it. you're not going to be coloring that. All right. Last, last one. So sometimes the way I come up with the design is what will fit on my rectangles. I had already told my people, you know, the, the people who are on my mailing list and um, my, my current customers who buy things from me like every month. And they, okay, I already got smudges on this one. Yeah, the magic eraser isn't that magic. So that one's, it's okay. I, that's what you cover up with the little stars. But anyway, I had already told everybody, I'm just turning that one over so we don't get ink on it that we're using the, the Jingle 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 stamp set, which I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do some in Poppy Parade now. That's what we're doing. We're stamping the Poppy Parade parts. 
And, yep, I'm getting smudges around, but I'm going to color those with stars. I told them we were using the deckled rectangles, and I said we were using the, the stitch rectangles. So that's why I'm trying to, like, work with... It's kind of fun to tell everybody that, too, because then when I'm designing, I, I just design with those things because I could just design with anything. I'm all over the place. I want to use everything. And that's what I used to do several years ago on YouTube before when I first started my channel. I just I just took out whatever and just did whatever, and there was really no consistency. I mean, I just started making a bunch of things with a bunch of different stamp sets. And I think I overwhelm people a bit because they're like, well, I don't have the 15 products you used to create that card. And I'm like, oops, well, that's how I roll. And then I just started, like, the last few years, I just started focusing on making more with just a few products. Because you can. It's just that I like to use everything. But I know when I'm teaching, I have to stop myself and just say, okay, I'm going to use these few products. Tell everybody what I'm using, and then you can follow. Then everybody can follow along. You might not have the same color ink. That's okay. But you can still follow along with whichever supplies you have and coordinate your things. So what I'm doing is all the jolly. This is in Poppy Parade. Why Poppy Parade? Because it's a coordinating color in both the... Actually, I'm not that disappointed with this one. I'm just going to... I'm going to go for that one because I'm not disappointed with that smudge. I'm just going to go ahead and cover it with a star. So Poppy Parade is one of the colors in not just the paper called... Santa Workshop that I accidentally called Santa's Workshop. But it's also the paper in... It also coordinates with the other paper called Celebrate Everything Designer Series Paper. So that's why I'm using it. Okay, you can use... I'm oh, sorry, Pacific Point is not in this paper, sorry. Pacific Point's in my Celebrate Everything, so I had it out. So we don't need this color. Shaded Spruce is in both papers. Santa Workshop and Celebrate Everything. Uh, this one is only in the Celebrate Everything, so we'll get rid of Polish Pink for a moment, but I do have examples of that. Crush Carry, I think, will work with both. Granny Apple Green is in both. And uh, Pool Party is the color we're going to use for our accents. So we'll leave this one out. All right, so let's now do the tis. What we're doing now is tis the season. 2B. Okay, so that's... We're opening up Shaded Spruce. And I'll go ahead and mount this stamp like that. Tis the season to be jolly. Put that one over there. Get it out of the way. I always stamp on my mat first. Okay? And if you're like, wow, that's really cool, Paper Chef. Like, my stamps don't do that. You need to dry out your stamps. Dried out stamps work better than the gushy stuff that starts oozing out. Like one of my customers, Leslie, she's like, my stamps are oozing out all over the place. I'm like, you know, when you first get them, they're so juicy. I actually leave them out to dry, like, like, you know, and then just start using them. And, like, they become better. Like, this is I've had for a while. That's why it's, like, works so well. So stamp pads become better over time after they dry out a little. So if you're trying to get them to dry out, then use them for inking around edges and start, like, soaking up the ink around the sides and stuff. Leave them open to dry out a little bit. I mean, then you need to re-inker eventually, but I really hardly ever re-ink. It's, it's only when I'm... I use most of my re-inkers for all my baby wipe techniques. All right, so good. Now, let's go ahead and put some... I'm going to put some of it... Let me get rid of it. Okay, get rid of shaded spruce. I don't need this, but this is a good one to ink around the edges with. All we really need now is the pool party when we do the little inking around the edges. We're going to do some coloring now. I'm going to move this. Let's see. Get that one. Let's see. I could put my little marker. I'm gonna, I need this tray for my marker. So let's, but I still need that. I'm just trying to get rid of everything I don't need. Don't need the color. We need this little block. Get rid of that. All right. So we need our blends. I'll tell you what. Don't get overwhelmed by this many blends. I didn't use that many. In fact, I didn't use the dark ones at all. So let's just tell you what I used. I used this little. Sometimes I used the petal pink marker. I did use polished pink only when I was using Celebrate Everything paper, but I, I'm not using that paper with you. Light shaded spruce was still kind of dark. So let's, let's, um, here, I don't really recommend it, but it, It'll be our backup plan. We'll put it over there. Light Granny Apple Green worked well. Light Poppy Parade worked okay. Here, we'll put that. 
We'll put that back there. It's just okay. Crushed curry worked pretty good. Pool party worked good. These I'm using markers and blends. Whichever one kind of comes out later. Well, they don't really make a they don't make a blend in Crush Curry. They don't make an actual stamp and blend marker in that color. So so I'm using that. Okay, so we'll use Poppy Parade. So we need we need like you need like four or five colors. You're gonna repeat them. And then you need Wink Estella. So we don't need all these other colors. This one was I did need I used the gray only when. Let me show you what I used the gray for. And then I mean Wink Estella. That's the sparkles. I used this when my stamp didn't come out that well. It says dark smoky slate. So here, here's where I use the dark smoky slate, the reason it's out. So you fix your stamps. You don't want to use black to fix black because then you get too much blobs of black in these little bulbs. Well, you can use black, the thin marker, but so when, when this didn't come out that well, I went in there and fixed it with the gray. So for, for example, like this one, see how it's a little bit like light. I went in there like that. So these are just little things I do. But I don't, I don't really need to do them. I mean, I'm happy with my the way my stamps came out today. All right, so let's get the pink and just do the pink for a few. So this is called Petal Pink. But in when you use the blends for Petal Pink, it's really light. Like too light, the Stampin' Blends, in my opinion. So I, I'd rather use a Stampin' Right marker. Now, when you stamp with the Memento Black in the first place, you can color in with either the Stampin' Blends or the markers. But the markers will smear because these are almost similar kinds of ink. These are like both like dye-based inks. Well, Memento is a hybrid, but we'll have to get into ink styles another time. I mean, ink types, but we... When you use an alcohol marker with the Memento Black, it doesn't blend. It doesn't bleed, not blend. It doesn't bleed. So just randomly color a couple each color. All right, let me save. I should just save a few of these for later here. Let's save. We'll do, I'll just do a couple more and we'll save some for later. Save some for when I'm watching TV after all. But the, I'm trying to show you kind of what I would do, though. Even though I'm in a video and I should be going faster, not doing all the steps I would normally do, but I'm like, I can't help myself because I, I don't just color, like, petal pink, one little bulb, stick my stick my cap back on. I mean, I literally would get nothing done as a crafter if I did that. See, this crushed carry is kind of dark today. I don't know why it's so dark. I would get nothing to accomplished. So... Wow, what's going on? Maybe I used the smaller side. So that's why I color like all the one color. Get it all done. And then all the next color, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'm only going to do one of these crushed carries from now on because it's a little too dark for me. And it's sort of coming out. Where'd you come from? I must have forgot to color him. I'll put this one over there too. We got we too many going on. All right, that one needs a star. All right, good enough. Oh, here we go. We'll do one over here. Now I will take Crush Carry. Let's do some Granny Apple Green with the blend. See if we can use this side. Sometimes my thick side is all wonky because of the of the big brush tip, but this one's pretty good. If your brush tip's all jacked up, then just use the smaller end. All right. This one is going on smoother and lighter. I like them lighter. For the bulbs, I like them a little bit lighter. Okay, good enough. And now we'll do a poppy braid and a couple. Poppy braid's a little bit dark, you could say, but I'm still using the, the light poppy braid. I'll just do one of these and then the two pool parties. All right, that one, I'll just do two pool parties on that one. 
I'll do two pool parties on that one. All right. Depends on how many bulbs I have. So let's see. This Sometimes I have an extra bulb from the angle that I was using. So watercolor pencils, if you don't have markers. So the three sets of color th tools we have. So we either have the stamp and write markers, which are die based. These, these markers are the exact same types of things that we make our stamp pads out of. So they're just dye based ink. So, and it's a water based dye. Okay. So it's a dye. Well, they're all dye based. I meant, I meant water based dye. The next ones, these kinds are alcohol based dye. So like these are alcohol dyes, these alcohol based inks. And then we have the watercolor pencils, which are dry, and then you add the water to them. Okay, so those, you can use watercolor pencils, but they really they really come out light, but they're an easy way to color your little bulbs. So use whatever coloring tools you have, but don't just randomly get colors. I used to do that when I was a beginning crafter. I just randomly grab colors and, oh, that'll look pretty. No, it really won't coordinate and it'll look kind of funny. Now I'm using Wink of Stella to add some sparkle to all these. Use coordinating colors. I'm using... I'm intentional about all these colors I'm using. These are all colors that go with the paper, the Santa Workshop paper that we're using featured in this video today. I mean, personally, it, you've heard me say it, I don't like petal pink. It's probably my least favorite color. I can't think of a, a, a more unhappy color. But everybody seems to love it. I don't know. Oops, there you go. Forgot this one. I mean, there was this thing that they... Uh, this paper last year, I think it's something to do with roses or something. And it and the colors were like depressing to me, but it was like it it was like a hot selling like hotcakes. It was gray granite, petal pink. And I think that was the only couple colors. I'm like, seriously. I'm a brights kind of person. I like the brights palette, but to each his own, and that's okay. I'm using whatever colors coordinate with this and I mean, it's still cute. It looks good. I use it for my piggies. I mean, piggies, you need petal pink. I mean, that's a great piggy color, but it's just not my favorite color, even though piggies are my favorite stamps. So anyway, you don't want to just randomly grab colors because they're your favorites. You want colors that are going to coordinate with the papers you're using so that your card comes together in a cohesive way. All right, we've done all our little sparkles. I hope you can see that. Wait. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but there's little sparkles in all the lights. I may have forgot to sparkle these. Nope, I sparkled them. All right, so sparkle, 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 sparkle. That didn't take long. Now we're done with this whole thing, except for the this part. So we need this part. So the last, the last final touch is take away, get rid of your silicone mat. And you want you want a blending brush now. Grab a blending brush. I should have one laying right here on the table. Well, I couldn't find I couldn't find my bluish one, but my green one is pretty good because it doesn't really have anything on it, so it's okay. Now we're gonna take. Because when you're done your blending brushes, you can wash them, but you can just go like that and get whatever's off of them. So you're going to put some ink on your... Let's use a small one. We're going to put some ink here. Right, get, get about that much ink. Like Just dip into your pool party. And then tap, 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 so you know how much ink you're putting on. And then tap onto your mat. And now what I want you to do is ink around the edges. Ooh la la, isn't that nice? You can ink around the edges for dimension. All right, we got a blue, bluish green tinge going on, but... That's okay, because I guess my green came out when I started mixing it. I just had my my pool party one sitting like right on the table before this. And yes, I do gather all my supplies, and I don't know what happened. I did a walk around. It wasn't on the floor. We're going to keep going with it. That's still cute, though. What, what has a little bit of a, a blue and 
bluish green tinge, but it, so that's, now what happens is you can put that on a background. So we're going to get into the layering stage in a minute, but now what happens is you put that here and instead of having so like the white clashing with the other white, you have this nice, oh, that actually goes better. Kind of good that there was a little green mixed in there, but you can see how you're putting a little dimension around your edges. So that's what I'm doing this for. And it doesn't really matter what kind of background you put this on because you are just adding a little bit of extras around the edges. And then just keep on getting more ink, keep on tapping, and keep on doing the edges. Okay, now my blue's finally coming out. That one I should have tapped onto the mat first. When you get a lot of big smudges, you just go ahead and go with it and make the whole thing darker. So that's my trick. So you never really make a mistake. You just make everything look intentional. So you're going to go like here, like around. Okay, that side's dark, so now make this side dark, right? And then it looks like you did the whole thing that way. You just match the corners a bit, so something like that. That one's looking good. And then a couple more. The reason I tap onto the onto the mat that I'm using, or like the, it's called grid paper. You can buy these grid papers too. They're really good for protecting your table and for seeing how big things are. Like, you know, you're measure, measuring, they're really good for measuring. There's a metric side and an imperial side to them. And I write my notes on them. And then what happens is like, I, I was tend to like lose my notes. So what I started doing is either before I throw out all the mats, I lay them all in a big pile of these like grid papers. And before I throw them out, I take photos of them if I'm in a hurry. And if I'm not in a big hurry, I transcribe them into my book now. I keep all my little measurements in a book now because I'm, I'm creating card recipes. And so now I don't lose my recipe. So these are good to write your notes on, especially like during my videos, you've seen me write lots of notes on these. I don't have any measurements for you for these because I'm just using rectangles. All right, so that's good. Now I'm going to layer them up and we'll make the card bases and we'll be done. All right, let's see. And then I'll show you all the projects made. Oh, I really like that one. I like that one dark. Let's go ahead and put this one over the side. Nice. Sometimes you just test it on a different paper that contrasts. So you could test your your even how even things are. Like that, like that corner you know, isn't as dark. Okay, another trick, like if you start having ink all over your fingers, put sticky notes on the parts that you're, that way you don't get smudges all everything. Okay, I'm liking that, that's good. Now, we'll start layering up. And to do that, you wanna test it out. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff here. I'm gonna grab my, so let's just start testing it. So you just go, we have our layers, and it's like, tis the season to be jolly. So let's see. I can do a fa-la-la-la-la, right like that. And then you would need a bigger one. So that's like not the biggest one. I think there's, see? And you put one of these behind it. And then you would put this whole thing on a poppy braid background because you don't want to put it on a shaded spruce background because, well, here, we can even have to do with the card part, so I can just show you. That would be not enough contrast. So what you would do is you put it on this whole layering pile. You'd put it on this background, and you'd have a nice set of layers. Okay, so just layer these up. You can add that one extra layer of this size too, but I don't want to use that size right now because it, if you use this size as an outline, you can't see the fa la 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 as much. See what I mean? It cuts off too much of the words, the fa la 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 words, but we'll still use that. Maybe we'll use that on one of the cards anyway when we use the bigger file a lot. So you, you're either gonna put three or four layers on each of your cards. Every card I had has three or four layers, being this is a layer, this is a layer, and then this is a layer. So you want three or four layers. Now, if you're gonna use that layer, that's cool, except you're gonna be blocking off this pretty picture. So, right? So let's use this one, because this one we might be able to use for something else, because it's horizontal. 
and my cards are all going horizontal. This one, since it's vertical cut, we'll just use that piece. So there's our three layers. So that's how I do it. I just sort of mix and match. That's why you cut out all the pieces at the beginning with me. And you're like, why is she cutting out so many pieces? Because I don't want to go back later to cut out just, you can cut out three pieces of designer series paper at once. So done. Let's check this one out. This one, I would not want to put this there. Not enough contrast. If I put this there, you could still see the pretty trees. Okay, so that's good. We can just go with that. Just to season two be jolly, even though it doesn't have to fall la. I'm just showing you, when you have a pretty picture, don't block it. Don't block it off. By putting too much around it, you want the, you want the scene to have a chance to breathe. So that one only needs two layers. We might be able to put another layer in the back. So let's get the next one. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe. I'm not feeling it. Let's see. Ho, ho, ho. All right. Let's see. I'm thinking yes for the ho, 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 but not the green behind that one. I think I need the little red part behind that one. Then you can't really see the fa la la, though. So this one, to me, needs one of these behind it, because then you, there you go. Perfect. See what I did? Layering. Got the contrast. Put that there for a second before we use up the other. So we have forgot to ink around the edge of that one. I know I inked around the edge of four of them. Where'd it go? Well, maybe I didn't. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see if these are the same. Let's get ready. One of these things is not like the other. All right, I'm getting rid of the ones that are the same so we don't have to get confused here. All right, this, these are going together. And then this one, I forgot to ink, or else if I, maybe I didn't forget to ink it, but my little, the fourth one that I did ink is missing in action. I'm just, this is getting a little, not as much ink as I normally would. Just because, tapping on whatever's over there. All right, good, 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 good. So I'm going to put this one on the fa la, -la. Okay, like that. And now behind it, I think I can go for something like that. Okay, there we go. Done. And now if I was going to use this one in the middle, out of all these extras, then that's okay as long as I could still read the fa la, -la. So if I was going to use that, I mean, that's an okay extra layer. But I don't think it's needed. I think it cuts, I think it takes away from being able to read the fa la, -la. So we're gonna do it like that. So three layers or four layers. You'll see how I, you know, in the, in the final cards when I show them to you how. Now, if you're having trouble with your seal and you're like, wow, she's using this so seamlessly, that's because I don't use the seal hardly. I use seal plus. Yes, it is a little bit more. It's probably like a dollar more. You can see I hardly ever have trouble with it. And I say hardly because I have tangled myself up into a pickle a few times. Look at these little ridges, though. It makes it easy to pull apart when using. Wait, I keep on turning what I want the ho-ho-ho to show. I don't want the ho-ho-ho and the fa-la-la-la on the same card because then you don't have, you can't read the words. Too many words. See, so this is easy to use. And I probably don't even need so much of it. But I like to use it around on my corners. And you can use glue, you know, you can use glue too. Or seal plus. All right, now I need a card to put this on. And that's where the last step comes in. Okay. What we need, let's just see what we need. Poppy prayed, poppy prayed. Shaded spruce, shaded spruce. Okay. Mm, yeah. This one can probably be on a Shaded Spruce or a Granny Apple Green or Poppy Parade. I'm just going to only make two card bases just to show you. So while I can score with the Simply Scored, uh, uh, the paper trimmer, I like to score with my Simply Scored. I'm using Poppy Parade cardstock, comes in a pack of 24, and Shaded Spruce cardstock comes in a pack of 24. It, to save money, get them in a pack of 24. You can buy all the variety packs as well. 
but you don't get as many. You get 20 pieces in there. I'm scoring along 4.25. That's what I'm doing, just so you can see that. 4.25, because the paper is 8.5 by 11. So it's 8.5 goes across. I'm scoring at the 4.25. Done scoring. Now I'm going to cut at the 5.5 mark. Open up the trimmer. Put the paper now 11 across. You, this is a review for you. Actually, we have to use the other side. Trimmer, it's upside down because you can see the numbers better on top. Okay, five and a half. Cut. Done. You have two cards. Do it again. You have four cards. Do it again. Six cards. It's so easy to make all your cards at once. Done. While you have your trimmer out, take your little spatula, any spatula or bone folder, and use the edge to flip it over. Because that's the valley that you scored. Flip it over. And now you got the mountain. That's the mountain fold. Okay? And now use your little spatula while you have this little trimmer because it has a nice corner to it. Or the corner of your Simply Scored. And then your cards will be perfect every time. You'll be like, they'll be folded perfect. They'll be cut perfectly. And no wonky cards. Except for the fact that I have adhesive sticking all over all kinds of stuff over there because I shouldn't put the adhesive on until you're ready to stick it to a card. I'm going to have like something going on over there. Okay, let's put this there. Let's finish these up. We're going to probably put that one on there because these ones go on the... Oh, Good, it didn't stick that bad. These ones go here on the poppy parade because of the contrast. And this one's going to go on here like that, like so. Boom, with a nice little margin because I already have three layers. You could have put another layer, and I'll show you the... Th the I, some of my cards, I'm going to show you, probably have four or five layers. But I'm giving you the at least three layers kind of concept. Like you got the bottom, and then these two are fine. I mean, maybe we could do one more. Nope. Well, this one, that one could probably use a rectangle, but we'll see. This one is good. It has three layers. I have to look through the camera to see, to be above it. I'm happy with this one. That... That one there, I just feel like I need a little more contrast behind it. I think I'm going to grab a piece of another paper from another mat for a second. I think it needs a piece of grainy apple green. It either needs this. Nope, it needs this other one. I have this other kind of piece. I kind of mixed all my papers together. But from the Celebrate Everything... There's this little piece of granny. Yeah, this piece. This is what it needs. It needs this cute little piece behind it, maybe, because that will match the trees and contrast with the shaded spruce. That's what it needs. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and do five, not five and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and do another extra eighth of an inch. So instead of five and a quarter, which will be two eighths, I'm going to go five and three eighths there. Oops. Get that blade in there. Five and three eighths. And instead of four, like I normally would make a mat, I'm going to make it four and an eighth. You'll see why. It'll just kind of go along the back of this better. It goes, That way I have a little tiny eighth inch around the edge. See around the edge of my card when I do that. So five and three eighths by four and an eighth. So let's go ahead and put that on there. Yeah, I like that. So uh, everything I showed you so far was Santa's workshop. Or Santa, Santa workshop. And except for, except for this piece here, this is from the Celebrate Everything Pack designer series paper. Okay. There you go. All of these are done. This one has an eighth of an inch. They're all different or they all look different. And the only thing left is those little stars, but we won't put the stars on them. Because I'm going to show you what the stars look like. They're called adhesive back stars. 
I'll show you the ones I put adhesive X stars on. So now I'm ready to show you. I'm ready to say hello. We just made all these. I'm going to show you the ones I made prior to this, and then I'm going to show you the ones that I made in parts one, two, and three. So we have Kathy, hello, and Melissa from Texas, Lynn, Lynn M, Charlene, who has been participating in all the groups a lot. Thank you, Charlene. She has a new Scan and Cut. She's so excited. She's in my Scan and Cut group sharing what she's making. Hello, Deborah from Australia. All right. Lenexa from Kansas. Casper, Mary from Wyoming. Casper, Wyoming. Denise, hello. Huh? <laughs> Did you hear that? My Alexa. I don't want to say her name, but you know, my machine. She's back there telling me all about Kansas right now. She's, she's still going through facts about Kansas because she must have thought I said something like her name. Okay, stop, Alexa. Oh, she, I can't make her stop. Okay. Hello, Deborah, Denise. And that's from the other room. It's like, it's like A is spying on me in the other room. Okay. So Kathy was answering the question about Eden's Garden. And we have Deborah and Lisa and Marilyn and John and Kelly. Thank you guys all for coming. And another Mary. All right, good. So this was part four. So let's show you the rest of part four. So we're here at part four. There's one we started. You can do what we did here. This is the ho 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 and the poppy prayed, one I did earlier. I want to show you some other th aspects of these cards. You could take a deckled rectangle, the largest one, and use it on the inside of your cards for your message. That really goes well with the outer deckled rectangle. You see? And there's those extra layers there. Okay. You can put adhesive back stars on these, as I did here. And that adds a little bit of bling to them. Use an odd number, like three or five. Another deckled rectangle on the inside. Here's a shaded spruce card. Here's another one. Yep, same thing. Okay, here's an extra layer. Here's how that little layer that we made right here will go well with this paper. Now, if you want to color this, you can also color in the lines or use your pool party or one of your light colors. Color in the white lines for more contrast. But there you go with the four layers. Okay, here's, an, here's the granny apple green. In between, this was a piece of cardstock between. So a big layer of fa -la, la and then a big cardstock layer. And this was that same eighth of an inch I was telling you about that I did with this card here. Actually, I like it better with DSP rather than plain old granny apple green cardstock behind it. I like the DSP layer. Here's another one where I used the white deckled rectangle. I had a couple extra white deckled rectangles from the inside, and I said, oh, let me just try to put one behind the fa -la, la And I really like how it really made it pop. And there's some extra. Oh, and here's what happens when this is, this actually was kind of cool. So here's, I, I used the stitch rectangles with the deckled rectangles. That's what I wanted to show you with this card. So stitched and deckled. But when I was trying to blend my pool party around the edge, what happened is I accidentally touched the jolly and it started blending and it came out really cool. So then I just went with it. So I just went with it and smeared it all because some of it got smeared and I kind of smeared it all. So if you want to blend over your ink when it's not too dry, just go with it, and that can be a really cool effect. Just use your blending brush on purpose after it starts smearing to make it all smeared. Okay, and then this one is really fun because it's using the other paper called the Celebrate Everything paper. And so the difference in the coloring, I just wanted to show you a couple differences. This card is not like any of these because for all of these, I used Poppy Prayed and Shaded Spruce, like you just saw me do in the video. But for this one, I used Polished Pink and shaded spruce. And then to tie in that polished pink, I colored this with polished pink and this one using one of the blends, this blends marker. And I really like how it came out because it's such a happy card. Then I put a little bit of Pacific point behind it, put the whole thing on a polished pink card. And now you have what we call a non-traditional Christmas card with those really fun pink colors. All right, so this was all part four. And then I took a piece that we started in part one you saw how I created these backgrounds for part one. And I just took the stitch or the deckled rectangles and added it to it because I still had a couple card bases left over. Okay, so these are all the jolly cards.
Going backwards in the last video in part three, I shared how to use the Stampin' Blends to create this effect, and we used Wink Estella and this effect on the, the ombre effect where you take your light and dark grainy apple green and your light and dark po uh, poppy parade, and you create this. We also used in part three the Snowman Magic Stamp Set, which was really fun to combine with the jingle, jingle, jingle. And what's really fun about it is inside some of the cards, I put this sentiment here. It's the most magical time of the year because this really went well on the inside. I'm not sure where I put that. Let's see which one I put it in. That one has nothing on the inside. There it is. That's where I put it in this one with the deckled rectangle. So that really works out well. The little snowman scene, I showed you how to build that in part three, really works out well. So go ahead and check out part three if you missed it. You see the ombre effect, how to build this whole snowman scene, how to color it. Blend it, okay? And then we did four cards together and then I had a couple that are, these are in the works. This is another one showing stitch rectangles and decals together. This one doesn't have a card base yet or a, a background yet. And then this one is one that I finished since then. So this will go good on there too. All right, so those, those are the Believe card we did in part three. And then in part two, we did bags and um, 3D. So the three D items we did and put this so it was just part two. We did this. We did the bags, the gift bags, jingle, 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 and we did some jolly tea holders. I'm going to show you what inspired me to do all these projects here. So this one, and I'll take out the cards from part one. So jingle, jingle, put little bells from Hobby Lobby. Showed you how to make the cards, and the cards are, they will hold. I mean these bags. I'm sorry, gift bags will hold the cards we made in part one. Okay, we have, this might be inspired. Yep, there it goes. All right, so inspiration for part two was Kathy, who's here today. She sent me this Halloween bag. And then the Halloween cards and things that were in the bag and Christmas cards. We opened these all up in the, in the video in part two so you can see how each one, there's lots of fun folds. Even a couple that go with our series here from Jolly. I mean, I'm going to say Jolly, Jolly, Jolly. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Right, these are from Jingle Jingle Jingle. She made it with that. So here's lots of inspiration for you. Oh, next month coming up is gonna be Cheerful Basket. This one's blown away, or I think it's called I'm Glad We're Friends stamp set. And this is Cheerful Basket. Perched in a tree, I believe. All right, so, and Bewitching, Bewitching. All right, so these are some fun things and she sent this bag and then I created these bags with that inspiration. And then on that same one, number two, or part two, I used this for inspiration. This is what Hattie, my upline, Hattie Nelson sent me using some flower paper that's retired, floral, flor, flowering fields. I took it all apart and I, you can create this. I got little stars all over the place. Double tea holder. So we created that in part two. You can put a sentiment on each side, but I put one on just one side because it sticks out the edges. And I used these stylish shapes dies. Oh, I wanted to mention this. I made this diaper fold using the Celebrate Everything paper with a six by six piece of paper. You can take this and it will hold one tea or one Ghirardelli chocolate. You could take the same six inch piece of paper and it amazes me even looking at this now. And you can make out of six inches a double holder so this is the same amount of paper as this, and it holds two tea bags. So check out my video in part two to see how that works. And then part one, we did these together. We created these Celebrate Everything cards using, again, deckled rectangles. In fact, lots of layers going on here, but we used Jolly, we used Polished Pink, and we used the Celebrate Everything paper, and Put a little star in the middle. That was a suggestion from a viewer. Some of you guys like the outline. You can outline it. You can outline your stamps like that. But I prefer to use the outlines as in this way where I color them in separately. But you can use them as an outline for your actual stamp. Okay, so here's just some extra cards made with the same design. The Believe and the Jingle was made from the, the same design we created the Jolly Cards. And finally, I want to show you my little box 
that I just worked on, where you take your deckled rectangle and you turn the deckled rectangle into a lid of a box. So you get these little edges that someone thinks you cut with scissors and did all this work to get the edging. But really, I was just using a deckled rectangle as the edge of a box. And it holds lots of candy. So this was the Celebrate Everything paper. This was just a piece of, I cut a little smaller than the lid. You know when I teach box making, you always make the bottom smaller than the lid. But that's all I used was a deckled rectangle. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're enjoying this series. And if you don't already have Jingle Jingle Jingle, you know where to get it. Use the link in the video, the description, and go to paperchef.stampinup.net. And if you want to be on my mailing list, that's also where you sign up for my newsletter. Thank you very much. This is the Paper Chef.